The doorbell rang and we were shocked to find a deputy sheriff on the other side of the door with a woman who identified herself as a victim's advocate with the Leon County Sheriff's Office. She was the one who told us that Anne had been shot. Kate and Andy Gromer had just returned home from a Palm Sunday service. When they got the news, their 19-year-old daughter, Anne, had suffered a gunshot wound to the head. Anne had spent the day with her longtime boyfriend, Connor. I asked, was Connor with her? And it was the deputy sheriff who said that Connor had shot her. I couldn't process why that would have happened. I knew it had to have been an accident. It wasn't until we got to the hospital and the detective told us that there had been an argument. Connor immediately turned himself in. For now, the Gromers could only focus on Anne, who was on life support. Her father, Andy, stayed right at her bedside all night, praying. About two o'clock in the morning, I was standing over her bed and I heard her say, uh, forgive him. And she did not say those actual words, but I felt like she was saying it to me because I knew exactly what she was talking about. She was asking me to forgive Connor. And I said, no, I'm not gonna do it, no way. After about 25 minutes of saying no to her, I finally said, I'll try. But there was no, she never woke up. The next day, the deputy told them what had taken place at Connor's house on Sunday. That's when we found out that they had been having a breakup fight and Connor had intended to get his father's shotgun to kill himself. But when Ann came back into the house, they continued to argue and he ended up pulling the trigger and shooting Ann instead. On Thursday, the trauma surgeon showed the Gromers a CAT scan of Ann's brain, riddled with shotgun pellets. It was then they realized she would have to be taken off life support. As I was sitting there gazing down at her, I saw her transform in the bed, and what I saw was Christ uh, became one with her, uh, not separate, but just as one completely together. I started sobbing, and it was because I realized that Christ was with my daughter, and I realized that it was not Anne asking me to forgive Connor, it was Jesus. And how could I say no to him, who had forgiven me for all my transgressions? While at the hospital, Kate discovered Connor had put her name on his jail visitation list. She went to see him the next morning. It was Good Friday. He immediately started crying and said he was sorry for what had happened. And I gave him the message that Andy had given me, and that was that he loved him and forgave him. And I said, Connor, you know I love you, and I forgive you. And once I said those words, I didn't feel like I have needed to take them back then, and I've never felt like I've needed to take them back since. Kate returned to the hospital and was taken off life support that afternoon. She died on Good Friday, and she died in the three o'clock hour, the same hour that Jesus died on the cross. She is in the arms of Jesus. She is in heaven. She is at peace. Through a voluntary legal process called restorative justice, the Gromers were able to sit in a room with Connor while they shared their grief, and he expressed his remorse for shooting Anne. After that meeting, in which Connor revealed details of the two-day argument that preceded Anne's death, they were able to take the first steps toward reconciliation. Forgiveness is my part. Repenting is on the part of the offender, and if you don't have those two pieces, then you don't have reconciliation. Connor was sentenced to 20 years in prison, Andy and Kate visit him regularly and call him weekly. The Gromer's decision to forgive me was the only reason that I ever came to believe in God and believe in Christ. It, there's no other explanation for the forgiveness the Gromer showed me. Normal people do not forgive the man that kills their daughter. Normal people would hate and condemn Normal people would be angry and hold on to that anger and wish me nothing but evil and probably want me killed. Instead, the Gromers decided to respond with forgiveness and respond in love. And that's, that's nothing but the love of God shining through them. In the years since Anne's death in 2010, Kate and Andy have become a spiritual mother and father to the young man who took their daughter's life, nurturing his newfound faith and even attending his baptism all because they were able to forgive. Things that forgiveness has done for me is to keep me from being going to prison with Connor, being locked in the cell of my own hatred and anger and bitterness. One thing that Kate said is that 
She wants me to live a life that's worth two lives, live a life that not makes up for the life I took, but at least puts good back into the world. I've got to give back. I've got to serve others. I've got to help others. I could not define Connor by that one moment, because if I defined Connor by that one moment, then I was defining Anne by that moment as well. And that would make her a murder victim. And she was so much more than that. So every year, even though there's a, a date that is the anniversary of her death, Holy Week will always hold that special message for us that even though there is the, the death on the cross on Good Friday, resurrection will follow on Easter Sunday. Such a beautiful, beautiful story. And I'm just reminded of a, a particular verse. It's Isaiah 61, three, and I just wanna read it to you guys. And if you're watching this and you just feel moved by that story, I was, and I'm sitting here just amazed by Kate and Andy and, and what they were able to do, the parents able to forgive the man who took the life of their daughter. Let me read the scripture to you. It's Isaiah 61, three, to all who mourn in Israel, he will give you a crown of beauty for ashes. And in the Jewish tradition, when you were mourning, you would rip your clothes and you would put ashes on your head. So instead of mourning, our God puts a crown of beauty on your head. And the verse continues, it says, a joyous blessing instead of mourning. He's going to bless you even in your grief. And it says festive praise instead of despair. Because of what Jesus did, because of what we just celebrated yesterday and continue to celebrate every day of our lives, what Christ did on the cross in his resurrection three days later, we are able to have joyous praise instead of mourning. What a God we serve. Praise God. And again, continue to just live out the truth of the resurrection every day of your life. God bless you guys. Hey everyone, I'm Ashley Key. Thank you so much for watching this video. Be sure to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so we can reach more people with encouraging content like you just watched and so you never miss a beat. See you next time and God bless.